Okay, welcome back. I'm now doing question number five from the June 2022 International A-Level at Excel Statistics S1 paper. This question is about discrete random variables. And the first part of the question is about a probability distribution um, for a red spinner. And um, the score R can either be two, three, four, five, or six. So that means um, those are the numbers showing on the spinner. And these are the probabilities of each of those numbers occurring. So it's not a fair spinner, it's a biased spinner. Some um, numbers are more likely to land than others, not equally um, likely outcomes. So we've got to show that the expected value of R squared equals 15.8. So basically what they're asking us to do is to find the mean of the squares from this table. So what we've got to do first is find what R squared is, uh, which is 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. And the expected value of R squared is going to be these squares of the scores multiplied by the probabilities of those scores. So you're going to have 4 times 0 0.25 plus 9 times 0 0.3 plus 16 times 0 0.15 plus 25 times 0 0.1 plus 36 times 0 0.2. So if we calculate this, let's see what we get. 4 times 0 0.25, which is going to give me 1, plus 9 times 0 0.3. That's going to give me, be careful there. Um, that's going to give me 2.7, I think, plus 16 times 0 0.15 plus 25 times 0 0.1 plus 36 times 0 0.2. Hopefully, if I haven't typed anything wrong in the calculator, that should come out as 15.8, which it does, 15.8. So there's the answer to part A, pretty simple. Then it says, and when it says show, that means you have to show your steps carefully. Don't just write down the answer. It says given also that ER, the expected value of R is equal to 3.7, find the standard deviation of R. So I know that the standard deviation of R is given by the square root of the variance of R, which is the square root of, now the variance is the mean of the squares, which is ER squared, which we just had to find uh, or show, minus the square of the mean, which is e, the expected value of R. So you've got to square that. That's the mean, ER squared is the, that's the square of the mean and that's the mean of the squares. So if I take the answer from the first part, 15.8, and I take away 3.7 squared, and I find the square root of that, that will give me the variance, the, the standard deviation, sorry. Okay, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I'm going to do the square root of 15.8, take away 3.7 squared. And that gives me root 211 over 10, the square root of 211 over 10, which I want to give the answer to two decimal places. So I press SD button, I get 1.45258, 1.45258. So to two decimal places, that's 1.45. So there's the answer. That's the standard deviation of R. That's the answer to part B. Okay, now for part C, it says a yellow spinner is designed so that the score Y is given by the probability distribution in the table below. So this is a different question um, or different spinner. It's a yellow spinner. It also has the same numbers, two, three, four, five, and six, but the probabilities are not the same. So we've got the probability distribution in that first or that second um, row. And the third row is called what's called the cumulative distribution function, which is basically the sum of all the probabilities up to that particular point. So as you can see, the sum of the probabilities of getting two and a three is given by this. So F3 
is a probability of probability of two plus a probability of three and so on. This is like the cumulative frequency for those. So it says write down the value of D. Well, we know the sum of all of these is going to be one. So this is going to be one. D is going to be equal to one because we know for sure that, um, you know, this is basically the sum of all the probabilities, okay, um, up to so probability of 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, which is going to be 1. The probability distribution is always equal to, the sum is always 1. Now it says, given that E, Y, the expected value of Y is 4.55, find the value of C. Okay, it's 5 marks, so something a bit more involved is here. So let's see what E, Y is. E, Y is the expected value of Y which is going to be y times the probability distribution and the sum of those. So you're going to have 2 times 0 0.1 plus 3 times 0 0.2 plus 4 times 0 0.1 plus 5 times a plus 6 times b. And all of that has to equal 1. So let me just, uh, uh, equals 4.55, sorry. That's going to be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 plus 5a plus 6b is equal to 4.55. So that's uh, 1.2, right? That's 1.2 because, that, yeah, 1.2 plus 5a plus 6b equals 4.55. So we can say 5a plus 6b is 4.55 minus 1.2, which is 3.35. 3.35 that's 5a plus 6b i also know that um so i also know that the sum of all of these has to equal one so i can say um the sum of the probability distributions the probability the sum of probability of y equals y has to equal one so i can say that 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus a plus b is equal to 1. So that's going to be, we can say A plus B is equal to 1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6. So I know that the sum of these two is 0 0.6, so I can now um, solve these two equations simultaneously. I can say 5A plus 6B, and I can say 5A plus 5B. This is 3.35, and if I multiply this by 5, 0 0.6 times 5 is going to be 3. So if I subtract these two equations, I end up with, oh sorry, that's 5b. 6b minus 5b is 1b, and 3.35 um, minus 3 is 0 0.35. So therefore I can say a is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.35. So a is 0 0.25. So let's start filling in what we have so far, we have this is 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.35, this is 1. So of course, what we can say here, as we can see, 0 0.1, okay, um, you get 0 0.1, then I add these two together, I get that, okay? And if I add these two together, I get that. So add these, these two together, give me that. These two together, give me that, because it's a cumulative frequency. So these two together give me this. So C is going to be C is going to be 0 0.625. So zero C therefore is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.25, which is 0 0.65. So there's the answer for C. It's a bit off the page, but that's just about got it right there. So that's 0 0.65. And we can see that, you know, 0 0.65 plus 0 0.35 is going to give us 1. So it's, it's correct. Okay, now, so there's the answer to question part D. Okay, now for question 5, part E, it says, Pavel and Jesse play a game with these two spinners. Pavel uses the red spinner and Jesse uses the yellow spinner. So I've got the tables here for both of them. This is um, for Pavel. And this is Jesse. Okay. They take turns to spin their spinner. The winner is the first person whose spinner lands on the number two, and then the game ends. Jesse spins first. Find the probability that Jesse wins on her second spin. So for Jesse to win, okay, on her second spin, and 
as Jesse spins first, that means the first thing is you got to find the probability that Jesse did not get a two because when somebody gets a two, they can't have to continue. When uh, well, sorry, when somebody gets a two, the game ends. If they don't get a two, the game continues. So the first throw is, is Jesse's first throw. Um, she can't get a two. Then there's going to be another throw, but this time it's going to be Pavel's turn. And again, he's not going to get a two either. He's going to probably find the probability that Pebble doesn't get a two. And the third throw is going to be Jesse's second throw, which has to be a two, because then her the game stops then, because she's got the two on her second throw, and that's the end of the game. Okay, so we've got to think about the probability of, of Jesse not getting a two, which is from the second table, and we're looking at the probabilities, not the cumulative distribution we're looking at the probability distribution which is this okay so don't get um get messed up with that one so the probability of getting a two is 0 0.1 the probability of not getting a two is the probability of all the others which is 0 0.9 that's the probability of getting a three four five or six that's if she gets any of those she won't she she will have the game has to continue then um pavel has to throw so this is his probability distribution for the red um spinner now, for him not to get a 2, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.25, so the rest of them add up to 0 0.75. That's the probability of him not getting a 2. And then the third throw, which is Jesse's second throw, which is where we want to, to stop at, she has to get a 2, which the probability of that is 0 0.1. So that should give you the answer to this question. So if we take 0 0.9, take um, multiplied by 0 0.75, and then multiplied again by 0 0.1, that should give us our answer. That gives us 27 over 400, which as a decimal is 0 0.0675. 0 0.0675, and there's the answer to part E of this question. Now we're going to move on to part F, which is the final part of this question. It says, calculate the probability that in a game, the score on Pavel's first spin is the same as the score on Jesse's first spin. Okay, so the first spins have to have the same uh, number on them. Okay, so that means the first spin could either be a 2 and a 2, or a 3 and a 3, 4 and a 4, a 5 and a 5, or a 6 and a 6. Basically, those are the combinations that you can have. Okay, so the probability in the game, the score on Pavel's first spin is the same as the score on Jesse's first spin. So we can say that we're going to have um, basically the probability of getting two and two. So two on Jesse's first spin and Babel. So it doesn't make two and two plus the probability of getting uh, three and three plus the probability of getting four and four plus the probability of getting five and five plus the probability of getting six and six. This is going to be on um, Jesse's and Pablo's. Okay, in that order. Jesse's and Pablo. Okay, so we're going to have basically the probability of this 0 0.1 times 0 0.25. So you'll have 0 0.1 times 0 0.25 plus you're going to have 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 plus you have 0 0.1 times 0 0.15 plus 5 and 5 is going to be 0 0.25 and 0 0.1 25 times 0 0.1 plus and then you've got 0 0.35 and 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. So all of that together will give us the answer to this. So let's be very careful when we type all of this into the calculator. We're going to have 0 0.1. Be very careful. I said 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.25. Okay, plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. 3. Okay, let me just do this up here so I can see. I haven't written anything down. 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 um, plus 
we've got 0 0.1 times 0 0.15. Zero point one five plus um, we're going to have zero point two five times zero point one zero point two five multiplied by zero point zero point one plus finally zero point three five times zero point two zero point three five multiplied by zero point two and that will give us thirty nine over two hundred which is the same as 0 0.195 um, as a decimal. So that's 0 0.195. That's a probability that they get basically a double. Pablo and Jesse get the same score on their first spin each. Okay, so that's the answer. The, the score on Pablo's first spin is the same as the score on Jesse's first spin. Actually, no. There's something wrong with that. Because if Pablo gets a two, if Jesse gets a two in the first spin, or Pablo, any of them, that's going to be taken out. So it has to be just these. Uh -huh. So you've got to take away this from the answer. That's a clever one. Minus 0 0.1 times 0 0.25. Okay, so that's 0 0.17. Okay, so I'm going to leave this in here just to illustrate to you. You see, the, the game is, if you get a two, the game stops. So, for example, if Pablo or, or whatever his name is, Pablo or Jesse, if any of them gets a two on their first throw, the other one's not going to be able to throw, so they won't be able to get the same number. So we've got to exclude these twos from this. Okay, it has to only be three and three, four and four, five and five, six and six. Okay, so... That's the only, those are the possible numbers that you can get doubles for, all right? So you've got to exclude this. It's just these added together, which gives you your answer, okay? So if we go back to here, we've got 0 0.17. Let's just go back to here and just take away that first set, hopefully, just to check that we've done it right. So if we take away this first part of the question, this first, these first two, that was press equals, yeah, 0 0.17. Okay, so uh, in the beginning, I was gonna, I was about to get this question wrong. As, as we know the mark scheme, well, as you don't know, but at the time I'm making this particular video, there's no mark scheme for this paper yet. So I'm just, um, you know, doing it without the mark scheme. So I, I, in the beginning, you have to think about this question. I'm, I'm sure a lot of students, they fell into that trap. But you see, it says, it says here, in this particular game, the winner is the first person who spinner lands on the number two and the game ends. So if, if it doesn't matter even who goes first, if one of them gets a two, the other one won't be able to throw a two because the game has ended. So the only way for the first th for the first spin can be the same is if they both get numbers which aren't two. So Jesse gets a three and what's his name? Pavel gets a three or Jesse gets a four, Pavel gets a four and so on. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. It can't be two, two, because one of them gets a two, the other one can't throw. Okay, so that's something that you have to take into account here, which I didn't in the beginning of the question, and I'm sure I'm going to get some comments um, stating that before people have seen the rest of the video, but no problem. Um, I'll leave that in there just to illustrate to you. Sometimes in an exam, you do, um, you know, do the wrong thing, and then you think about it, and say, oh, okay, hold on, I've got to... Uh, go back and think about it a bit more clearly so you know that that's how things work in an exam sometimes you start off with the wrong um, idea or something slightly wrong and then you go back and correct it so that's the answer to question number five part f and that concludes this question from the s1 june 2022 um, international a level exam other questions from this particular paper can be found on the playlist that will be in this region here you can click on that link to find it you can click on the link over here to take you to other questions which are related to this topic of discrete random variables and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle here you can go to the description of this video and find links to other material you might be interested in watching thank you for watching and see you soon